Okay, well, welcome everybody again uh, to the first Respect Life series. Thank you for uh, coming to this uh, first event. Before I introduce our guest speaker, I wanted to mention that we have a basket in the, in the back of the church for a free will offering for Pentecook Pregnancy Center. Uh, Pentecook Pre Pregnancy Center is a nonprofit organization uh, that offers free pregnancy tests, counseling, and much more. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have Kathy Kelly is here tonight, and uh, she would like to, actually she's got a wonderful story she'd like to share with everyone. Kathy? This really wasn't my idea. I could talk into doing this, but I only have two minutes to talk, so. You can't hear me? Please. Better? Okay, so every Thursday is abortion day in Manchester, so what we do is we stand outside of Planned Parenthood, and we encourage women, young girls, older women, to talk to us, and we'll help them. And if any of you in your church bulletin, if you see Thursdays on Pentecost Street, that's the information that we put out. We gather it every week, and Fran Hines over there, he compiles it, he sends it out in an email. We ask the priest to put it in, some do, some don't, but it is kind of interesting. So today, they want me to tell you what happened today. It was kind of interesting that a mother and a daughter, the daughter's 25, the mother, I don't know, but they went in, and the girl looked so, so upset about going in for an abortion. So the usual thing I say, good morning, can I help you? Uh, whatever you need, I'll get you. Whatever I can do for you, I will help you with. And in probably 10 or 15 seconds, they're already gone into the building, so... You just move on to the next one and you say what you say and you hope and you hope and they came out in two and a half hours and um, the girl looked at me again. She, she was so sad when she, when she said, she comes over to me and she says, you said you would help me. What can you do for me? I'm like, ooh, here we go. So I said, well, come here. Let's get away from here. And I said, we have a Pentecost pregnancy. We have a crisis center right up the street. If you see an incredibly impairment, you look right up and you can see the green building. I said, come on, we'll go up there. We'll sit down and we'll talk. Within 15 minutes, a suction abortion in Manchester is 15 minutes to kill a baby. Within 15 minutes of talking to this girl, I had a place for her to live. She's keeping her baby, and her mother and her, they, you know, they were desperate. It's a, everybody has a lot of baggage, and I'm not going to go into what their problem was, but we got them the apartment. She's moving in. She has another child. She's, she's uh, four, over four months pregnant with this baby, and... She really didn't want to kill this child. She felt she had no choice. And that's why we stand on it. I, we will help you with whatever it takes. And when she comes out, she says to me, you know, you said you would help me. What would you, I said, what do you need? She said, I need a place to live. And I'm like, oh, Holy Spirit, where are you? So I have a minute to walk up to this, to this crisis center. And I said, I've got to do something here. So I got her in, made a phone call, got her a place to live. And her mother and her, they sat there, and they kept saying, this is a miracle. This is a miracle. And I said, all babies are miracles, aren't they? So that's what we do. But we're coming back to speak in the fall, right? Yes. A real speaker, not me. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. That's a wonderful story to share with everybody. And again, everyone, uh, we have a basket in the back for a free wall offering for Pentecook uh, Pregnancy Center. Uh, now I'd like to introduce uh, our featured speaker, Kathy Souza. Since 2000, Representative Souza has served in the New Hampshire House of Representatives and has worked to further the cause of life issues related to the unborn, the vulnerable, and the elderly. Let's welcome Representative Souza. Thank you very much. I wish legislatively we had such good news as Kathy Kelly just gave you. <laughs> but this has been a rough year in the legislature. Uh, we started off with 400 reps, but democratically and therefore mostly pro abortion group of representatives, a divided Senate, and a very pro abortion. Uh, governor. But we still tried. The bills that we tried, and I'm sure you're familiar with a lot of them because you lobbied for them, and that was important even though we lost, 
we put in life begins at conception. Oh my gosh, that was horrible. We can't possibly say that life begins at conception because when you say life begins at conception, what naturally follows? They would have no how to that. So the sponsors, Jay Apple and the rest of us, worked very hard. We hope we made a little impact, but not enough to pass. We tried to feed a homicide bill. That's been tried for the past 20 years, as you know. Most states in this country do have a bill that protects or tries to protect the unborn from homicide, whether it's murder, manslaughter, or whatever, but not in Hampshire. We did pass it, as you would recall, two years ago, but it was vetoed by then Catholic Governor John Lynch. We couldn't override his veto. This year, we thought we had a better chance. Representative Leon Ryder from Laconia, pro-life, grandfather to be, seven-month-old, pre-born little boy in his daughter's womb, killed negligent homicide. His daughter survived barely. His grandson did not. So he had a personal story to tell. He presented it to the reps, and we thought, maybe, since he's one of us, they'll listen this time. They would have no part of it. If we recognize the unborn, in this case, heavens, we might have to recognize the unborn, and eventually people will get the idea and Roe might be overturned. They would have no part of it. We tried clinic licensing. After the Gosnell, big expose in Philadelphia where these horrible conditions were exposed and this abortionist was actually convicted and sent to jail for killing a woman plus with born babies. We thought, well, maybe, just maybe, we can pass some clinic licensing in New Hampshire. They would have no part of that. The pregnancy of uh, I'm sorry, Planned Parenthood facility on Patrick Street, Kathy just referred to, has no doctor. The abortionist is a nurse practitioner that comes down from Vermont once a week. We call them circuit right abortionists. The abortion clinics are not licensed, they're not inspected in New Hampshire. It's their open game on women and babies. So we try licensing, not licensing, statistics. Since we don't know how many abortions are done in New Hampshire, because nobody has to report, we tried a statistics gathering bill. Anonymous statistics. No, they've had no, nothing to do with that. We can't possibly gather statistics. Why, well, it's gonna cost the state money. We had reps take the mic and read to the fellow reps how many categories, not just of anything, but just of health, that we gain statistics from? We explained how we could get statistics from AIDS, for big cough, the tetanus, the flu, the whole thing. We can spend money on that, but no, we couldn't spend money on abortion statistics. So it, it was not a great year. However, we did defeat, with everybody's help, a resolution that would have not only recognized Roe versus Wade, but celebrated it. And this bill that would have celebrated Roe, House Resolution 6, was sponsored by a Catholic. Representative Bouchard from Concord stood up, proclaimed she was Catholic, and introduced this. We were able to get it tabled and it's gone. So with everybody's help calling their reps, we did manage that. Uh, we had bad news today. The buffer zone, which you probably heard about, passed the Senate. The buffer zone has one target. There are several abortion clinics in New Hampshire, but the buffer zone legislation has one target. 
the place that Kathy Kelly just told you about, Pennycook Street, Manchester. It's the only place that's targeted. And why? Because people like Kathy and her friends have success. Every time a girl changes her mind and walks out, it costs Planned Parenthood 500 to $700. That's all they care about. So they are very upset that women such as today occasionally walk out. Maybe it's every two weeks, maybe it's every three weeks. They don't want that happening at all. Their idea of choice is no choice for the baby. And their five to seven hundred dollars is very important to them. So we lobbied very hard, and we people, everybody across the state lobbied very hard. But the Senate today sealed the fate, and we're going to have a buffer zone. However, it's not going to stop us. It's not going to stop people like Kathy. It's not going to stop uh, Jeannie, who's been doing it for 15 years. We're going to be there. And I see the Dezulos are here, and they come regularly to keep Rings uh, statue of Lady, Lady of Guadalupe while we pray outside Pennycook Street every Thursday. It's not going to stop people from going, it's just going to make it harder. It's going to make it harder to reach out to the women. It's going to make it harder to hand them something. Our arms can't extend 25 feet, but our prayers will. We'll find a way. The signs may be bigger, our voices may be louder, but we will find a way to reach those women with God's help. So any success we have is coming from above, we know now. But there is one thing I would like to do about the buffer zone. It still could be vetoed. We do have a pro board governor, but I think she deserves to hear from us. And her number is real easy. 271-2121. It's 271-2121. And so I really think in the next few days, that people all over the state should stop bombarding the governor's office and say, please veto the buffer zone bill. Not only is it going to hurt us, it's going to hurt the women, it's going to hurt the babies, it's going to hurt the really nice neighbors that are going to have us on their sidewalks. And it's fine to pray all day Thursday, but do they really need us praying in front of their house when they're trying to sell it? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be really difficult. So, it's infringing on our free speech, something that we all cherish. And so, I would ask you to please call the government. That's one thing we, we really could do. Uh, we did have some successes this year on the assisted suicide end. We defeated a bill relative to the crime of causing or aiding suicide. I wonder how many people know who sponsors these bills. Well, I don't think there's anybody from our area. Uh, I'll read O'Flaherty, Winters, Val, and Thornton Weed. Uh, these were the sponsors of a bill that tried to remove aiding and abetting suicide as a crime. Now, this was unbelievable when we first started to the pro lifers. Because you all hear of the bullying in school and kids committing suicide and teenage suicides becoming rampant, this would have made it okay. Completely eliminating any penalties for aiding and abetting suicide. But we defeated it with the help of people all across the state calling in. We defeated a bill relative to death with dignity for certain persons suffering from a terminal condition. Again, I wonder if the people knew who the sponsors were of this. But it was defeated. And there was another one on End of Life that we defeated. So, with the people's help, they were defeated. And the message that's coming through is that everybody needs to know who they're electing. We can't say, oh, this is a nice person that comes to church with us, we'll alert him to the state house. There's 400 of us 
but sometimes every vote matters. When we get two or three up there, that turn out to be really bad. And sometimes they're Catholic. Um, we really appreciate what the Knights of Columbus have been doing, especially at our March for Life up there. It's wonderful. And they've really been a big influence in the church. But a couple of years ago, when we were trying to get through parental notification, which we did, we had a fourth degree Knight of Columbus in Nashua objecting and voting against it. So we can't take for granted who these candidates are. We really have to check them out because they're a knight, because they're Catholic, because they're our friend or neighbor. Please don't send them to Concord unless they are truly, truly pro-life. Because we can't ask a leopard to change his spots. Once they get there, it's just too late. And this doesn't go just to the House, it goes to the Senate. Um, and don't be misled by people that say, oh, they're Republican, and the Republican platform is for life. On the buffer zone, we had four Republicans that voted against us. Someone I never thought would vote against us on this, Jeff Bradley was a sponsor. Reagan, a Catholic, was a sponsor. We, we just can't take it for granted. We have to be so careful. And sometimes people say, oh, it's only one in 400. Well, you know, the gambling bill, the last one, and I'm not saying if I'm for or against it, because this is an issue. It was a tie. It had to, with 400 reps, it was a tie. The tie was broken by the speaker of the day. So you just don't know. So again, please, Really be careful when you cast your vote. It all starts and ends right into the hell box. And I just want to say for the next session, many of us are very happy to take suggestions as to what pro-life legislation people think would be a good one. And I'm speaking to your own Joan Espinola here, wearing the Choose Life tie. And this was at her initiative in 2002. I think some 25 states have Choose Life plates now. You've probably seen them around the country. Massachusetts has them. And at Joan and Charles Espinel's urging, uh, uh, Dan Itza from Fremont put in the bill in 2002. And of course it didn't pass. But it did get a lot of attention. And I'm looking for the front page of the Union Leader now that had it at the time. And all this does help. It does make an impression. No effort is ever wasted we do in pro-life. And so from that initiative from uh, Joan and Charlie Fanoa, there was a lot of press. There was a lot of controversy in the State House. They couldn't stop us from arguing on the floor. Although when we held the sign up, it was gathered out of order in the host chamber. We were not allowed to show it. But by then everybody had seen it because it was already shown. So Joan has found a rep that is willing to sponsor a Choose Life license plate for next year. So I'm going to turn over my file to Joan to give to him, and we'll see that come up next year. We would like to put in Life Begins at Conception again next year. Uh, Representative Rideout, who lost his preborn grandson, is going to put in the bill again for fetal homicide. Uh, we're going to fight very hard to keep parental notification, because now that the pro-abortion advocates have succeeded in the buffer zone, unless it's veto, we're going to try. They're going to try to repeal parental notification. Parental notification has had an effect at Pennacook Street. We see many fewer young girls going in, pushed in by their boyfriends. So it is working, and we, don't, we really don't want it challenged. Um, 
There's another topic we need to work on, and I would suggest um, that the KC has room for it next year. We do a seminar on end of life. It's a huge area, and it's a huge mess. Just last year, the legislature passed a bill that was very dangerous. It changed the end of life documents, the secular ones, and the Catholic one, Free Beliefs, has not been revised to keep up with the new and improved secular one. And so, if you should come across an end of life document, be very, very, very careful. The new state-sponsored ones are extremely dangerous. And I'll, I'll explain why briefly. In the old one, there's a line, I'm talking about the secular one, which most people did sign or do sign. There's a line that says, I do or do not want life-sustaining treatment. But then there's a follow-up line that says, I do or do not want artificially administered food and water. And you all know what that means, intravenous or whatever, or feeding to. The new law provides for a change in that wording. You check off, I do or do not want life-sustaining treatment. There's no mention of food and water. You do not know the definition includes food and water. The new bill, the new law rather, I'm sorry, the bill that was made into law changes the definition in the law books of life-sustaining treatment to include artificially administered food and water. It neglects to put it in the document that you are handed and that you sign. So a person signing the new document will not know when they say, I do not want life-sustaining treatment, that they're also saying, I do not want food and water. Now the diocese has said that they are going to write a new three beliefs to caution people how to fill out the new document properly, but it hasn't appeared yet. So, and I just wanted to put that out as a caution, and I, I hope that maybe um, this venue would be open for a seminar, and maybe we could bring in some real experts on the end of life issues. But for now, we're going to keep working next year. The filing period, if anybody wants to sign up for a rep, is the first week in June. Uh, can you start June 4th to the 13th? And we really need some good people. And I can't encourage you enough. It does take a lot of time. It pays $200 a biennium. But you do go through the toll booths free. <laughs> and you meet a lot of good people. And you bang your head against the wall every day. But uh, it's really worth it. And I would really ask that some of you do think, and if you can't yourselves, encourage your friends. And above all, please just vote pro life. Thank you. Oh, of course. I don't know if I have the answer. You're grandfathered. <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah, even even if you sign the older secular one, that's grandfathered. Yes, you're safe. I was hoping a friend of mine would arrive tonight, and I know the Knights of Columbus can't campaign. I know you can't, you know, endorse candidates. But I think I'm allowed to say that a colleague of mine in the State House uh, was expected, but she's the head of the Rockingham uh, County Republican Committee, and they had a meeting at 7, so apparently she didn't get here. But uh, your uh, Windham Senator, Senator Roush, is retiring. 
uh, he, he was a pro-life folk, but he is retiring. And the lady uh, that I'm referring to, a colleague of mine, in the State House, uh, is putting her name in for Rush's seat. Her name is Regina Birdsell. And I was hoping she could put an appearance just to mingle, uh, but apparently she's tied up. But she is 100% pro-life. I've enjoyed working with her, and so I just do want to say that if you get to meet her and talk to her, you'll see that she's got life. I thank you so much, and thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Kathy, for a wonderful talk on legislative bills. As we can all see, it's, it covers uh, a lot of grounds from uh, abortion to uh, suicide and many other topics. And that's what the Respect Life series is all about. Uh, Father Brian had mentioned that this is my son Jordan. He uh, gave a reading tonight. We've been uh, working on trying to promote the program. And uh, we need your help in promoting the program and, and reaching out to more people. Uh, we're going to be having this uh, series, you know, the, fir or the fourth Thursday of every month, all the way through October. And we're going to have a variety of speakers show up. Uh, the only Thursday that won't be the fourth Thursday uh, will be uh, October. It'll be October 21st for that one. Uh, a few uh, announcements is uh, Al Regini. Thank you, Al, for uh, filming this uh, program, this Respect Life series uh, for us here. Uh, Al Regini is going to film this, and we're going to air it on a public uh, TV stations for Wyndham, uh, public TV channel, and also Salem channel. And we're working to, uh, to get it aired on the Dairy channel as well. As a matter of fact, we have a sign-up sheet in the back. If you're a dairy resident, we need, I believe, 10 or 12 dairy residents uh, to sign so we can get that aired uh, in, on public TV there as well. And if anybody is interested who's here uh, is interested in, in airing it in their local areas, uh, just talk with me or, or Charlie Espinola, and we'll get a, a DVD to you so you can share it with your local station. I'm trying to reach out to as many people as we can. Uh, let's see. So uh, next, uh, the next Respect Life series will be next month, June 26th, and our featured speaker there will be Darlene Pollock. Uh, the topic there is her life story. Uh, she's actually conceived from rape. And it'll be an amazing, she's an amazing speaker. Uh, she talks on many uh, pro-life topics, and uh, that's what she'll be speaking on next month. Uh, also, please stick around. We have refreshments in the back. Uh, we'd, we'd love to talk with you more. Uh, it's in the back of the church. And again, the free will basket is in the back for the Pentecost Pregnancy Center. Thank you all for showing up, and thank you, uh, uh, the Knights of Columbus Council, as Knights of Columbus uh, representatives for helping me uh, put this program together, including thank you Charlie Espinola and Father Brian for putting on the mass. Thank you, everyone.